Okay, Peter, you should probably put on the suit right now. Probably put on the, you should probably put on the suit right now, Peter. Peter, Peter, you, Peter, you gotta put on the suit right now. Pete, 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 punch the glass, Pete, 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 punch the glass, Pete, Pete, Aww. Hey, it's me, Skaboopy. The one and only, Skaboopy. I hope I'm not irrelevant yet because we're back with another amazing Rate the Suits video with the amazing Spider-Man. Not a whole bunch of costumes in this one, but I think it deserves its own video instead of being bundled up with the sequel of the game, like I did with Spider-Man 3 and Web of Shadows beforehand, we, which you should watch by the way. So we're just going to be talking about the amazing Spider-Man 1, and I'll say there's some admittedly alright costumes in here, and there isn't a whole bunch of costumes either, so this should theoretically be a shorter video. Theoretically. I'm gonna throw out my thoughts when it comes to looking at these costumes. These aren't criterias or notes to hit, just something to think about. Well, that I think about when I'm, you know, looking at these costumes. And before we look at the costumes, I'm gonna talk about the game and how I felt. You know, as always, before we, you know, dive into the, to the suits. Of course, if you don't want to listen to me yap, then skip ahead with the timestamps I put in. Unless you don't want to skip. You, uh, you, you lazy Larry. And of course, thank you for anybody who popped into the stream or afterwards when I was playing this game. You, the people, are great. Especially from my last video where it had around 48,000 views, which is like, where the, where the fuck did you people come from? Like, holy hell, guys. I'm really happy that a video of mine has that level of views. And if that's my only popular video, you know, I'm, I'm gonna be so grateful. And I'm also gonna respond to those comments in the video and the shadow dimensions like I've done before. I, just give me a second, all right? To, uh, to, just give me a sec, all right? I'll get to it. Transition to the to the goddamn game already, all right? Jeez. This will look good on my resume. It also will look really good once you cripple these uh, just poor ill people, Pete. Wait, is this a mental asylum or is this a? Or is this a prison? Holy sh! Oh! What? Oh! Oh my God! Oh man! Oh whoa! Ooh. That's what you get for having depression. <laughs> Holy shit! Okay, clearly these guys are prisoners, but it's funny to pretend that these guys are just poor mental, mental, uh, poor, poor, like, you know, people. Listen, I'm with Connors now. I know, Peter, the whole city knows. You broke him out of prison? It's a mental facility. Are you out of your mind? It is a mental facility. You know oh, shit. So, first thing to note is that the combat has some really cool animations, as you, uh, saw beforehand. And the gameplay is very Arkham-like. It's not the best, but it does what it needs to, and I enjoy watching Spider-Man performing like wrestling moves all over the place here and there. Which, by the way, more characters should do wrestling moves in games. I, I think that shit is awesome. Second thing to note is that they should have called this game like The Amazing Spider-Man Rising Revengeance or Swinging Up Retribution, because you fight some Metal Gears in this game. The last robot you fight gives me some like Senator Armstrong vibes. But you're not wearing any clothes. Uh oh. You're not crazy. You bad shit insane. It's pretty fun to fight these giant robots and. Also really fun to watch as well. My favorite being the, the this weird snake worm one you fight. That that's my favorite out of all of them. What is that? Ooh. That 
Dr. Connors, turn off my pain there. What the fuck? Why does it have a black hole maneuver? Besides all that though, I don't have anything else to add, and if I do, it would, I'd go into it for very long. To, to uh, sum it up, um, basic combat, um, swinging from Uncle Ben's grip in heaven, uh, okay stealth, and okay story. Which I do like that it takes place after the first game, instead of retelling it. I think that's a cool um, you know, concept that I don't see much in games. The only example I can think of that a game does that is the Scarface game where it's a what if Tony Montano survives and it plays out like a what if sequel. Sorry, I got sidetracked. That, that, that was a cool game. Um, overall, this is the most 7 out of 10 game I've ever played. It's not so bad. Should have named it the not so bad Spider-Man. Getting up. Payback. Well, that's the game out of the way. So how about we finally move on to the costumes. What's really cool about this game that I didn't mention in the section before is that it reintroduces battle damage to the series, which was included in Edge of Time before, but in this game, it's gameplay tuned and it's something that I very much love, fits Spider-Man very well, and is a favorite feature of mine that's, that's included in any game. It's even included in the alternate costumes, but not all of them have it, sadly enough, but the ones that do really show off that cool damaged look. Especially with the default costume of this game, a favorite among a lot of Spidey fans. I think I can say with confidence that people were very mixed on this costume. It was such a drastic change at the time, going from the Raimi suit to this suit. What the fuck is this piece of shit? It's understandable to go from such a costume that captured Spider-Man accurately to something that's more dark and edgy looking. I remembered myself at the time googling when Spider-Man 4 is gonna come out and then I get this. However, like we said with the Edge of Time costume, it's very dependent on Peter and setting and the story. This Peter in the movie, when he puts the costume on for the first time, is unforgiving, a little brooding and dark, vengeful and only wants to find Uncle Ben's murderer. Which is why it's only when he becomes Spider-Man at the Birch scene and is then when he's much more like Spider-Man. He takes on the name Spider-Man, remembering hearing Gwen say it. Who are you? That's when it hits him. Spider-Man. The rest of the movie, I feel, definitely should have still kept him being a little angry here and there. That teenage angst, but he still looks good in it. And the game respects the look one to one. The game suit looks fantastic. You know, it has that basketball texture and the yellow lenses, which would be cool in white, but it makes sense because in the movie he used sunglasses prior. So, and so he uses them here. It only really continues to make this suit more unique in that way. The costume is a slim look that I often forget to comment that the physique of Peter can differ how a costume would look on him. I noticed that in this game he's kind of a little bit more physically built, noticeably where his pecs and shoulders are, right? But everywhere else is a lot more leaner, which is complemented by the front and back logos which, you know, go down his slender sort of look. Also, I'm a big fan of this logo, which is like this jagged, edgy look. You know, there's some tiny spaces cut between two. There's also this black outline, which the front logo seeps into, bordering the red and blue. I like it on the front, but I don't know if I like what it's doing in the back there. But besides that, I like where it goes everywhere else. Okay, maybe it's a little excessive around his pose area if you look into it, and I don't remember these black lines being that bold in the movie so maybe it's just the game with the lighting and everything that makes it you know stand out i'm not really digging what's going on in this lower part of his body finally the soles on his feet or something i think he cut out from like some sort of shoes it only really continues to give the feeling that this is very much peter's first costume from spare stuff that will help him oh yeah and how could i forget the belt um, the belt is more of a nod that Spider-Man has a belt underneath his suit for web cartridges and stuff, but why is it on the outside? It's again leaning into this being his first costume, right? 
he needs a belt and doesn't come to that idea of it being underneath rather than outside. You know what I mean? Also, a really good point is that you're looking at him, right? There, there is no shirt to pull up. This is a one-piece leotard suit that he... And there is no shirt to pull up. There, there's nothing. He can't, he can't pull anything out. How's he gonna piss? I realize I usually sort of talk about the live-action costume most of the time, but it's important to talk about that. And most of the time, the games can recreate the look from the movie so well that you end up talking about both. <laughs> After thinking about it a little further, I'm gonna give this suit a 9. I was gonna give it a 10, but you know, it's just those black lines, you know, below the belt. Um, it's fine w with his torso in the back, I can I can deal with that, but it's, it's a bit much down there for me. We've come a long way though in appreciating this costume much more now than back then. Also, here's how it looks when it's badly damaged. From cuts to this huge, to these huge tears, yet he's still fighting on? God damn. We're also gonna rate the battle damage looks from a 1 to a 5. And this is a 5. No questions. Excuse me. I need your help. You need to kill me. So you're probably wondering, wow, what a very weird exclusive costume made just for this game because it deals with cross species and stuff like that, right? But it's not exclusive. It actually dates back to a comic where Spidey gets infected by a puffy flower and transforms into that, that, that thing. He still retains his humanity and honestly looks okay in these comic panels, but in the game, it's a horrific abomination that they did to Peter here. I'm assuming they only used this reference to make this costume. They amped up that sort of body horror, especially in the back where it looks grotesque. And if you could tell, if you couldn't tell, he transformed into a spider, sort of halfway. And you have these spidey sp spider legs that, that creep around his side and cling to him. You have one arm and one leg that's mutated. Small tears around his body for more of that added grizzled look, and of course the face, like, yikes. You can see his pupils a different color and. It's cool that the lens is, is just gone, so you can see his eye. However, let's be honest here, this is a very uh, gross costume, and not I'm not really much of a fan of these mutated, half-transformed kind of alternate looks. I can appreciate that they made this costume fit with the game's, you know, um, story setting with the cross species, and some body horror aspects, which I, you know, I respect. Kudos to that. It's not for me. And I gratefully prefer different costumes and outfits. Also, it's just a poopy looking texture too. Ooh, let's just quickly rate this thing. Um, it's a 5. There's nothing wrong with these types of alternative costumes. And there's definitely people who greatly enjoy being a weird creature. You know he's not even, you know, he's not even like threatening or cool looking. More so creepy and a freak. Okay, anyways, it's a 5. Let's move on. Oh, and there's no battle damage for this guy, I, I don't think. But I made sure to see what Gwen's kiss would look like during the end of the game. Spread it to the city. Sorry. So did anybody else think that this was Ben Rally or was it just me? Well it's not because this guy is actually named Kane Parker. So who is this guy anyways? Well, back during the clone shenanigans where we got Ben Riley in that whole mess, Ben wasn't the first clone, it was Kane. And the Jackal thought he turned out great only for him to deteriorate. And so the Jackal left Kane to be left to his own emissions to see if he'll even last out there. Big surprise, he did survive and come back. And it wasn't for a while till he eventually put on the black and red costume as we see it now. Which, I'll say it, this costume's really edgy. If I was still 13 or so, I'd put this at a 10, cause black and red. Hell yeah. Thankfully, I've come to appreciate more costumes and colors, 2024, come on people. Um, I definitely appreciate this costume a lot as, as well. It fits the vibe of Kane and looks menacing as hell. It's translated very well to the game, and I'm glad there's no changes or tweaks because in hindsight, it's a pretty simple costume. There's no webbings, it's just this red tone with the black. The front logo is black to contrast the red and the back logo does the same in which the black makes a V shape that makes the that makes his back more defined. I don't know the word. 
there's a really neat texture on the red, but my favorite is this carbon fiber kind of thing going on in the black. I love carbon fiber. It, 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 it's dopamine to look at. Of course, those widened red lenses instead of the friendly white, like Spider-Man or even Ben, it's red and sort of evil looking. I think the suit is pretty cool, very edgy, it knows what it is, however as much as I like how simple it is, there are times where I'm looking at this costume and feel he's naked in the way with all the red below his logo. It's just all red down there. Um, I guess it harkens back to how Scarlet Spider Ben had where if it weren't for the uh, blue hoodie on top, it's just a red bodysuit underneath and since this is an iteration on that costume, I think um, that's why. Either way, I'm gonna give it an 8 for now for this game. It's cool to swing around in and fight especially too, but I already stated my issues. So let's move on to the next costume. Oh, and this Scarlet Spider outfit does not have any battle damage to it, sadly. But the next costume does. Well, 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 let me tell you that this is definitely a big surprise. Um, you think they wouldn't bring back the Raimi suit or let alone the symbiote variation, right? I, I guess it was still pretty hype at the time. And here it is. A bit of an improvement on Spider-Man 3 the game, I feel as well. It really feels like the costume from the movie. Um, you got the textures and the menacing edgier logos, which I will say the logos feel painted on to this guy. They, they feel like tattoos. Is it just me? The slick black look where the blue was and the white webbing, it's all here. Um, the lenses, I feel, they could have just made it a white misty sort of look. It felt like a muted cloudy white seen in some, some shots of the movie, but instead they just made it reflective. I really rather prefer that than the reflective lenses here, and the only time the, these lenses are reflective on the symbiote suit is this poster I found online. Um, it's so strange why they made that decision. Besides that, another cool feature of this costume is that it includes battle damage since it's a costume based on the look of it. It's not the, uh, the actual symbiote, so it could get damaged throughout a fight. It's really, it's really sick, man. It adds to that cool, edgy vibe. They captured this look so well, and when you swing around, oh my god. Um, before we rate this suit, I just want to sort of rant and just question why they decided to only bring the black web suit and not the red and blue one. It's not in the game, but the black suit is. Doesn't, does, doesn't anybody find that odd? I don't have anything else to add, sadly enough. It's just a, a great recreation of the same Raimi suit. Um, there is a little peeve I have where the lenses are like a little closer together. And I feel if it was just an inch further away, just an inch apart, it'd look fine. But whatever, man. I'm gonna give this costume a 9. And if you remember, I gave it a 6 in Spider-Man 3. So I find it an improvement. Really quickly. The battle damage on this guy looks awesome, adding more of the edginess into a disc suit. Um, easy 5. Okay, here's where we enter the issue with the remaining costumes in this game. And it's the fact they all have a variation of black in them. W wait, don't, don't take that out of context. <laughs> what I mean by that is that these three remaining costumes share the same dark look vibe, even the black suit does earlier, with an exception of one, and I think the reason is because this game offers stealth, and so they put in these dark costumes for that added stealth vibe, um, that's my theory, and you're gonna see what I mean, let me tell you. For now we're dealing with the future foundation costume, and like I said, it's the stealth variation of the suit, which only adds fuel to my theory. Um, the colors are inverted, so where the white was is now the black. And you get it. Um, it's meant for stealth missions while it's time being in the future foundation. No doy. I covered the original look in Edge of Time, so it's neat to see them going with an inverted look. Um, the black is kind of shiny and rubbery, and the white is just, just this pasty white. But I like how the white expands from the front and back look of the costume and seeps into the sides and lower sides of his body, being interrupted by these black lines. One thing to note is that the logo on the front is kind of lacking. It's, it's not as pronounced as I find these examples online, but more minimized. 
Of course, we can't forget about the eyes, and they only bulge out a little tiny bit in this game. It's a tiny, it's a tiny bit, and I like it that way. In the comics, I don't think they even made it jut out in any way like the white version. It has its glossy sort of texture look to it too, which is neat. And the whole shape of his eyes feels small and subtle than its angled and wider big lenses counterpart. I'm gonna quickly put this costume at a 7. It's neat. I like it. And trust me, I feel it's a better black and white look than the next costume we're gonna go into. Um, this future foundation costume is interesting and I don't think Roy uh, ever really see the style variation often so it's just cool to you know see at least. Sadly, no battle damage with this guy. Alright, this suit just keeps on coming back time and time again and I'm kind of getting tired of it. Is it because it's easier to implement? Uh, I, that's my guess, however, this costume is an accurate sort of version of a classic comic Spidey look. It has a unique logo on the front and the back has the fat spider. If you just look at him, it's the classic look. I don't know how else to word it, except it's in black and white. They made a whole classic look, a whole comic book vibe you know unique to this game with those big giant bug eyes only to make it black and white when we already have a black and white costume and a black suit what the fuck imagine this thing in red and blue the white lenses on top black logo and a red fat spider it would have been so cool and we don't see often a classic spider-man look as an option or a variation of the classic look to wear. And here it is, just in fucking black and white. This suit feels like wasted potential and as its own negative zone suit, it's literally fine. You know what? No, it, it's, it's a four. It's eh. I'm sort of getting tired of seeing negative zone Spider-Man and I don't want to think about this costume anymore. Oh, and it has battle damage too, I guess, but that's when I realized it shares the same rep and tears as the black suit, so 3 out of 5. Okay, I'm being mean, it's, it's a 4. 3. Alright, and we're on to the big time costume. Another dark costume, but this one at least has some color to it. Well, one color at least. I covered this suit in Edge of Time, however, that was the red variation and it honestly felt muted during the 2099 sections. However, in this game, they have the green one, which is the stealth variation. Uh, you remember my theory from earlier? <laughs> it looks pretty damn cool. I can't lie. Especially swinging in the night with the green illuminating vibrantly with those lines across his arms and on his legs a little and around his back. Guess you can say the green definitely pops more than the red. You, you see Spidey in red a lot and so forth to introduce green can work, especially with black together like this. A anything looks good when you pair it up with black. It looks awesome. Of course my favorite aspect of this costume is the neon aesthetic and man those eyes are give off that like techno future vibe. A little wider but slightly curved. I remember I had a problem with the front logo in the last game, but I like it here now. It's more big and wide enough that I feel it's not just the tiny weird blocky arrows. It's much more striking. And before I forget, the black has a really cool texture on it. You just have to look at it. Nice, right? Also, for some reason, this costume gives off that cell shaded look here and there. Looks cool, but I don't think they intended that. Maybe it's just me, but you know, I guess that's bonus points. I had trouble figuring out if this was a 9 or a 10, but after looking at the b-roll footage of swinging around in this costume, I, uh, I gotta give him a 10. Uh, he has a sort of simple design, but it only really helps it. And the vibrant light neon green is so good. God. There's no battle damage for this guy, which is sad, but there are people who prefer their costume to not be torn up, and I call those people pussies. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I get it. Anyways, easy 10 for me. You thought we were done? This is the same Raimi web suit. And holy god, it looks so good. If you're wondering, this costume is only DLC. 
so I was acting dumb earlier to catch people off guard. I'm just glad I found a way to use this costume and to look at it for myself. It's generally really good, you know, it has that same red and blue tone with the hexagonal texture, the webbing looks great, not super pronounced but you know it's good that way. It does share the same sort of issues like the black suit you know does since they're both the same costume. Um, the lenses being oddly closer and reflective instead of the white. Um, the front logo feeling like a tattoo. However, I don't find it as strange as it is, as it is on the back as I do on the front. Um, that back logo is just a chef's kiss really, you know, I, I love that logo so much. They also decided to make the soles on his feet white. It was only ever black in the first movie, and then in the second and third, it's red. So another weird thing they just decided to tweak, I guess, I don't know. I can ignore my nitpickings though, because when you run around, swing around, and fight around, it looks great. I can't complain that much, and this costume can be used instead of the amazing suit if you really want to. So yeah, I'm just not gonna waste any time in putting this thing at a 10. It feels more special considering this costume is in the main game. I'd gladly replay this game with this suit on because it also features battle damage too, which is so sick. Maybe one day when we replay all these games all over again, I'll replay this game with the Sam Raimi Spider-Man suit on entirely. Lastly, here's how it looks when it's badly damaged, and I'm starting to figure out that they may have just copy and pasted the same tear and ripping textures. So this was just kind of a waste of time. Still cool though, 5 out of 5. And with that, we are... Uh, wait... Oh, oh, I'm, I'm missing one. Alright, how do you get it? 100%ing the game? So this is the new black suit. Um, you get it for 100%ing the game, and I, and I mean 100%ing it. Is it worth it? I don't really know. It's now black and white, you know? It's, just, it's supposed to be the amazing Spider-Man's one variation of the symbiote suit, much like how the web suit has, you know, its very own black suit, you know, you know what I mean? It's just now black and white, and you remember those black lines? Well, now they're white lines, which I think are cool, but now they're way more highlighted, making these lines more apparent than when it was black, so you could see what I mean when I didn't like it below the belt and the hips. You know, I'm not a big fan of what's going on in this lower part of his body. I guess it would be a cool reward, but we already have three dark black and white costumes, so to add a fourth one on top of that, it's just the definition of insanity. I'm gonna throw up a 7 on the screen for this guy, and yeah. The concept that this is the black suit version of the Amazing Spider-Man 1 suit is, is a cool and, and neat to look at. And apparently there's an animatic of Spider-Man from the Amazing Spider-Man 2 wearing the black suit, fighting guards, and seeing the Hobgoblin. It, it, if anybody knows more about that and where I can see that animatic, let me know. It, it sounds like lost media to me. Okay, and with that, we are done with the Amazing Spider-Man, the game. Before I talk further, I, I watched Amazing PSM's video from my insight into the default suit, you know, the Amazing suit. It's a good watch, so if you find I say some similar things, then that's probably why. Um, but hey, I do of course always put in my two cents into what I think, okay? Anyways, I always say this, I think, a lot of the time, but I really don't mean to take long making these videos. However, you always know that when I do upload, it'll be worth something to watch, at the very least. Th that's, that's the hope. And I try to make every upload count, except the content warning one, that was kind of a, a spoof, April Fool's jokey video. Make sure to watch my other stuff though, I'm not a Spider-Man YouTuber. Even though it may feel that way, I'm not. Take a look at my best of 2023 video to get to know me a little better, or my lethal comfort video. Um, besides that, follow me on Twitch, I have an Instagram, and thank you everybody for watching, if you made it this far, <laughs> somehow. I'll see you guys next time, as the one, and only, Skaboopy. See ya.